Hi everyone, I'm Puria. Today I want to tell you about maximum fairness, which is a common type of resource allocation problem in practice. Unfortunately, the scalability of this problem has been a major challenge, and today I'm going to tell you the story of how we overcome these challenges. This is a work that we did as collaboration between USC, Microsoft, and Rice University. Resource allocation plays a critical role in many domains. Let's focus on one specific example for now. Here you can see an abstract Widerio network that connects different users. These users have some demands and want to send traffic at a specific rate toward the destination. The goal of resource allocator is to find a way to effectively route these demands. By effective, I mean they need to meet three key requirements. First, the allocator should efficiently utilize all the available resources that we have in the network to maximize the profit. At the same time, it has to be fair to different customers and tenants. Finally, it needs to be fast so it can react quickly to the changes in the network and the demands. Unfortunately, existing fair and efficient allocators are quite slow and they don't meet our time requirements. Let me show you how they qualitatively look like. Here, the x-axis is runtime on logarithmic scale. The y-axis is some measure of fairness that I'm going to describe in a few minutes. And the market sizes are proportional to efficiency. So for, just to make this simple, let's table efficiency, but keep in mind that the story is the same for that case as well. Ideally, we want to find the fairest solution as fast as possible. The first group of techniques go for exact fairness. They find the fairest solution, but they end up being extremely slow. The second group of methods allow for approximately fair solutions. These, enable, these allow uh, trading of fairness for a speed, but even these faster approximate solutions are slow and don't meet our time requirements. You may wonder how much speed is important and whether we can wait for these allocators to finish. We find that a slow allocator can significantly harm the quality of our allocation. In the, the reason is that the demands can change quite a lot over a short period of time. This figure shows the amount of change in Microsoft's traffic, traffic. And as you can see, in some points in time, the change is more than 40% from one time stamp to the next. So an slow allocator simply cannot react quickly to these changes and cannot update the allocation in time. And we find that an slow allocator leads to 30%, up to 30% drop in efficiency and up to 60% drop in fairness. This is when we compare an slow allocator compared to an allocator that uh, can instantly update the allocation. So to avoid these consequences, we, it's essential to speed up this process. Before explaining how, let me tell you about our notion of fairness. We use maximum fairness, uh, which is common in practice for its well-defined properties and guarantees. The intuition behind maximum fairness is uh, very simple. Imagine we have four demands. To be fair, we start gradually and slowly allocating resources to all these demands at the same time. We continue this process until we hit, hit a bottleneck point where we cannot increase allocation to one or more demands anymore. This can be because we don't have enough capacity or we, these requests are very small enough that we could have easily satisfied. We fix these demands and we move on with the rest. We continue this process. We iteratively identify the bottlenecks and fix their rates until all the demands have some allocation. So this, this approach naturally uh, translates into an iterative process where in each iteration, our goal is to find the next set of demands that are about to hit the bottleneck. For this, in each iteration, we follow two steps. First is finding the bottleneck level by maximizing the minimum allocation to all the demands. And the second step is to identify and fix the demands that cannot receive beyond that rate. This high-level architecture uh, can capture many of existing allocators, and they only usually differ in uh, specific assumptions and how they de deal with particular details. Broadly, we have two types of allocators. One assume that we can only route the demands on a single path. This assumption enable uh, designing algorithms that are much faster, but they end up being unfair and inefficient because they ignore the path diversity. The second group are iterative optimization-based methods that allow for splitting traffic over multiple paths, and they need to solve optimizations to find the proper split ratio. 
These are fair and efficient, but they are slow because they need to solve many optimizations. So you can already see the trade off space here, one being fast but unfair and inefficient, while the other one being fair and efficient but slow. So our method, Suruj, has a group of allocators that try to address the limitations of these methods. Each of these allocations fall in a different part of the trade-off space. For example, we extend the single path water fleeing to multi-path in our adaptive water flare. We replace the iterative optimization-based approach with a fast single optimization in our geometric pinner, and we combine the two techniques to have the best of both worlds in a quick pinner. So we find that Suruj empirically paradominates this PR work. Let's look at the qualitative results again. Geometric binary is an alpha approx technique. It has the same guarantee as SWAN, another approximate technique that, was used to, that used to be Microsoft, while being an order of magnitude faster. And you can already see that we can trade off between fairness and speed using the parameters in this allocator. If you are okay to relax the guarantees more, we also have a, some heuristics that are much faster, but they provide competitive fairness. So for this talk, I'm going to focus on geometric winner that we replace this iterative optimization base with a fast single shot optimization. If you are interested to know about the other techniques, please look at the paper. So let's, um, first I'm going to start with a Strauman approach to show, to show you how this conversion from iterative to single shot works. And then I'm going to tell you how we can uh, extend this to an approx fast approximate method. This is the high-level high um, pseudocode that I showed you earlier. It's an iterative approach to solve maximum fairness. First maximizes the minimum rate to um, all the demands, and then fixes, identifies and fixes the demands that are about to become a bottleneck. Optimization-based techniques usually solve an optimization for the first part. The objective of the optimization is to maximize the minimum allocation subject to the typical constraints that we have in resource allocation problems, capacity and demand. The goal is to replace this iterative optimization with a single fast optimization, and our criteria is we need to ensure that the complexity of this single optimization is the same as each individual optimization in the iterative approach. So we can, in theory, if we can do that, we can gain a significant speed up. To do this, we need to understand why we are iterating. By iterating, we are, in, in each iteration, we are identifying the demand that is going to be the next, to have the min next minimum allocation. Over multiple iterations, this means we are sorting the demands. The second is, is we are ensure that we are maximizing the minimum demands allocation. So to, the key to a single shot optimization is to capture these properties without iterating within one optimization. For the sorting part, we use a concept called sorting network. This has been used in the community for other, in other contexts, so I'm going to skip it. If you are interested, you can either look at the paper or the reference. Let's talk about the second one. Let's assume we, have, we know what the order of demands looks like based on their allocation. An iterative approach here would first start maximizing demand A's allocation, then demand B's allocation, and finally demand C's allocation. We want to capture this within one optimization, and the key here is to find a way to incentivize the solver to follow the same sequence. We use a technique that we call epsilon weighting. We assign different weights to different allocations such that the weight of the allocations that appear later in the sequence is lower. So here we assign one to allocation A, epsilon to allocation B, and epsilon two to allocation C. And then the optimizer tries to maximize the sum of these individual weighted terms. Note that the epsilon is between zero and one, so A has the largest weight and C has the smallest weight. By doing this weighting, essentially we are nudging the solver to prioritize A over B and C because the weight of A is higher and prioritize B over C for the same reason. And this mimics the behavior of the sequential approach that we had. So in the end, we have this single optimization, the epsilon weighting in the objective, the common demand and capacity constraints, and also sorting network constraints to sort the demands based on their allocation. We proved that this single shot optimization would give you the optimal maximum first solution for a small enough epsilon. But as I told you, it's a Strauman approach, so it has practical limitations. First of all, it's a slow. Even though it's a single optimization, the sorting network adds too many constraints and increases the complexity of the optimization. At the same time, this may run into numerical issues because of epsilon weighting in the objective. 
Note that we have millions of demands, so epsilon to the power of k can be quite small. So we ask ourselves, can we make this faster? We find that the challenge comes from the sorting network and the fact that we want to sort the demands exactly. So in the next part, we are relaxing this and we are going for approximately sorting the demands. We do this by a technique that we call binning. Assume demands can take any value between a zero and a max. We can divide this range into multiple bins and we can start allocating one bin at a time. Specifically, we start, we maximize the total, the, the, the total we can allocate from bin one to all these demands. Then we fix the demand that cannot receive the full rate and is saturated in bin one. We move on with the remaining demands to bin two and we just iteratively continue until we go over all the bins. By this spinning strategy, essentially we are approximately sorting the demands. We sort the demands across bins, but we are not sorting within a bin. So demand A and D that end up getting saturated in bin two, we don't enforce any order on them and they can take any order. That's why we call this as approximately sorting method that leads to an approximate maximum first solution. So in the end, this is the, what the pseudocode look like. We first try to maximize the total allocation from a bin. Then we fix the demands that don't receive the full rate. We move on to the next bin with the remaining demands. Now again, the goal is to translate this iterative optimization to a single fast optimization. And we use the same technique that I just told you, epsilon weighting. Take one of the demands for an example. It can take allocation from multiple bins. An iterative approach would first try to maximize allocation from bin one then maximize the allocation from bin two, and finally maximize the allocation from bin three. Here again, the goal is to incentivize the solver to follow the same order, and we use the epsilon weighting, which means we have lower weight for bins that appear later in the sequence. So, so far, I told you that we can do binning to speed up the process, and then we can apply epsilon weighting to make sure we have a single fast optimization. The next challenge is how we do assign these bin sizes. This approach is general and applies to different bin strategies. We choose to geometrically increase the bin sizes because we wanted to have the same guarantees as to one. The intuition is that demands with a higher allocation are less sensitive and can uh, tolerate more unfairness. This leads to our geometric binner, which is a combination of these three techniques, binning, epsilon weighting, and geometric bin sizes. We prove that geometric pinner is alpha approximate, means that its allocation is always between alpha times the optimal maximum first solution. And this alpha is a parameter that users specify, so they can trade off fairness for a speed as they like. We show both empirically and theoretically that this is faster than existing methods. And all these uh, different techniques, these guarantees, led to a production deployment at Microsoft. Geometric Binner has been in Microsoft for managing Microsoft Wideria network traffic for over a year. We, our measurements show that it matches the efficiency and fairness of the previous iterative solver while being 2.4 times faster on average and sometimes more than five times faster. Now let's take a step back. I told you that resource allocation is general, but it's a general problem. But so far we talked about just managing the demands in a wide area network. We also observe similar issues in cluster scheduling where we want to, we have jobs with different CPU, GPU, and memory requirements, and the goal is to assign these jobs to different servers. We find that there is a common abstraction that we can use to specify many of these type of problems. And it consists of three components. We, the resources that we want to assign, which means, uh, which are links in the wide area network, CPU, GPU, memory, and uh, in cluster scheduling. The demands that are requests for these resources, network demands in wide area network, jobs in cluster scheduling, and finally paths that refer to the group of dependent resources that we want to allocate together. These are just uh, networking paths in wide area network and refer to servers in cluster scheduling. The reason is that when we assign a job to a server, we are essentially uh, assigning all the CPU, GPU, and memory on the server to that job altogether. We find that we can encode these abstractions within a graph, and Saroosh applies to any method that, any resource allocation problem that we can describe within these components. Our evaluation shows that Saroosh empirically paired with dominates prior work. In the context of traffic engineering, we compared with Donna, which is an exact method. We compared with Swan, an alpha approximate method, and one water filling, which is a heuristic. This is the result for fairness versus runtime. 
The crosses are uh, the existing methods and the circles are R techniques. Dana is an exact fair solution and it takes more than an hour to finish. Remember that we have some time limits and we need to finish within a few, within five minutes at most, otherwise the demand diverges a lot. Swan is an approximate method which is faster but still needs 10 to 15 minutes. Geometric winner R technique um, has the same fairness as Swan while being eight to 10 times faster. And finally, we have equidebina, adaptive water filler, and approximate water filler, which are the techniques that I didn't get a chance to tell you. But these are faster, and these also provide a part to dominate curve. We also uh, evaluated Surush in the context of cluster scheduling, comparing with gavel with water filling and exact method, and a standalone gavel, which is a heuristic. And we observed similar results. We observed that Surush part to dominate these methods. To conclude, Surush is a general and scalable maximum fair allocator that can solve any problem we can describe as graphs. It's fast and scalable, and it also has parameters to enable users to control the trade-offs between efficiency, fairness, and speed. In the future, we are interested in uh, two directions. We are exploring extending Surush to other domains and also extending some of the approaches to we, we have to distribute the settings. Our code is publicly available, so if you are interested, please check it out. Thank you.